Hey friends, we're back with a lesson in dynamics by popular demand. Today we're talking about work and energy. Okay, so we're going to start talking about work equation. We need to find the total work done on, on, a, on an object here. So let's talk about work right quick. So what is work? We define work as some force that's going to cause some displacement uh, on some, an object or a body. So that can come from a couple of different things in, in the, on these dynamics problems. They can come from, number one, some kind of force, some kind of work done by a force, and then secondly, some kind of work done by a spring. Okay. Now, the work done by a force is, is going to be the same thing. It's just force times some distance. That's all it is. And so this is going to give you units of, in, in the metric system, Newtons times meters, or something similar to that, Newton millimeters, I guess, or kilonewton meters. And then in the USCS system, in freedom units, it's going to give you something like foot pounds, okay, or inch pounds, or, but anyway, some, some distance times a force, okay. And then the, in the, when you're talking about work done by a spring, you would use the potential energy of a spring equation, which is one half k x squared. Now, we also know that what is also a, a newton times meter. What is that equal to? Do you remember from back from physics class? Well, that also we could call that guy there a joule. Okay, so you might just see that as just a capital J um, for your work there. Okay. So we can have work done by a spring or work done by a force. So let's talk about the sign of that work because that's important. So here's the deal. This is real simple. If the, the displacement is in the direction that the force is acting. So if I put a, a force on something like so, and the thing moves from here to there, okay, we would call that positive work. It's moving in the direction of the force, okay? That would be positive work. Uh, if I'm putting, let's say this block was like on, a, on an incline or something, and, I, and I'm putting force on it still, but, or let's say I'm doing this, right? I'm putting force on it like this, but the block still is not, there's not enough force and the block moves down the incline. Well, since the force was going up the incline, but the block moved down the incline, then we would call that negative work. Okay, and same thing for a spring. Okay, if I have a spring on something, let's just uh, let's go back to an incline because we're going to do an incline problem over here. Uh, if I have a spring, okay, there's two kinds of springs. There's compression springs and there's tension springs. So, and you have to read the problem to see kind of what you have here, right? But if I take this guy, the spring is pushing that way. Okay, if I if I Move the spring in the direction that it's that the spring is pushing, that's positive work. If this is a tension spring and it's pulling on me, let's say the spring is pulling this way, but I take and I grab this box and I stretch it uphill, then that spring is doing negative work. The block moved in an opposite direction that the spring is pulling. Okay? So the, the main thing you gotta think about is number one, what's the equation? Are we talking about work done by a spring or work done by a force? And the second thing is what is the sign of that work? Is it positive work or is it negative work? Is it done in the direction of the force or in the opposite direction of the force? Okay, so there's your background on work. So let's see if we can do a problem and see what, what kind of work is being done on a block. So here we have a block with a spring. This is a tension spring here. And they tell us in this problem that someone has already gone and the block started here and somebody already stretched it whoop, to right there, okay? So they already have stretched it a half of a meter. That's before we ever started our problem. So the spring is like pre-stretched a half a meter. Now we take that spring and we move it another two meters. Okay, so now the spring has stretched a total of two and a half, but we, we, just, we just applied a force of 400 to move it two meters. Now look how that 400 is applied. It's applied horizontally, even though it's on an incline, okay? So what we're going to have to do is kind of look at the components of the work. How much did it move in the X? How much did it move in the Y? So let, we'll do that. Okay. So find the total work done. This is our, this is what we're looking for right there. Okay. 
And the force is 400 newtons. You see it right there. Okay. And, uh, and then S is the displacement up the block. So we're going to look at the force displacement, the spring displacement, or the work done by the force, work done by the spring, and then work done by the weight of the block. The block, it's not on here, but let's just say the block weighs 10 kilograms, okay? So let's put a, let's put a 10 kilo, whoop, there on my pen. Let's put a 10 kilogram on there, okay? Now, what's step one? I know y'all watch some of those statics videos. What's step one for a statics problem? Draw a free body diagram. Let's erase this and draw a free body. Okay, so our free body is going to be the block itself. Okay, so I'm just going to draw the block. Now we have to decide what is working on the block. I guess we need one more thing that I didn't put on here, and that is what is the spring constant? The spring constant is 30 newtons per meter okay so that's uh that's the value of k we need that to solve this problem okay so let's let's what goes on what goes on this block on the free body okay if you're the block what are you feeling well you're feeling the normal from the hill there the normal from the plane we'll just put this normal from the uh, plane okay what else are you feeling well, that spring is stretching this way, isn't it? We'll just put Fs for force of the spring because it's, it's being stretched. The spring is move, it's moving up the hill. The spring is being stretched. What else? Um, we've got that 400 on here. Okay, there's the 400. And then what else do we have? We have the weight of the block because gravity sucks, right? 10 kilograms. Now, that's in newtons. We need to get that guy in newtons also, don't we? So times 9.81 equals 98.1 newtons. Okay, so there's the weight of the block. So we have the weight of the block, the force applied to it, the force of spring, and the normal from the plane. So we need to look at each one of these items. This guy, that guy, this guy, and that guy, and see how much work, work each one of those items is doing. Okay, so we're going to look at each one. Now, one of the things that we need to kind of do also, let's just kind of sketch this on here. Here's the plane, okay? And let's just say this is where it started. So here's where it started, and here's where it is now. This distance is two meters, okay? And then let's just complete that triangle down here and look at it this way. Because this block, as it moves up the hill, is moving some distance in the x direction, but it's also moving, move that out of the way, it's also moving some distance in the y direction, okay? There's the x and the y. Okay, this is, uh, I already forgot what that is, in plane, right? Okay, so we need to know that. Well, this is easy. The problem tells us this plane is on a 30 degree incline here, okay? And so if this is two meters, we know that this guy down here must be two cos 30. So that tells us the direction, how much it's moving, that block moved in the x direction. And then this guy, 2 sine 30, tells it how much it moved in the y direction. Okay, so we're going to need that. So let's start off with the easy one. Let's look at the force. Okay, so the work, well, let's just call it u for work here. Okay, and we'll call that u from the force. Okay, so that's this guy over here. What's he doing? Force times distance. This guy pushed on the... Now, remember that you'd think, you think... You might think this guy did two, two bits of work. He moved it this way, and he moved it that way. But that's not really true. It's only work if it's moving in the direction of the force. So the only one, since the force is in the X, the only force that we're going to worry about, or only the distance we're going to worry about, is the distance in the X. Okay, so that's important. So this guy is... Remember the force... I just raced it. Force is equal to, I mean, sorry, work is equal to force times distance. Okay, so the force is 400 newtons times the distance, which is 2 cos 30. Okay, and that's all there is to that. Now, why, did I, why didn't I call that negative? It, well, because the force is going in this direction, and the block moved in that direction, right? So it moved in the direction of the force, therefore the work is positive. So let's get our calculator to do that. 
charge the calculator. Go. Okay, so 400 times 2 equals times the cosine of 30 equals 692.8. And that is joules, okay, because we're in the we're working in the metric system here, aren't we? Okay, so we got this guy here done. Check mark. Okay. Let's do the force in the spring. Okay, the force in the spring. So what do we have for U spring? Okay, this is a little bit tricky here. Okay, number one, the thing is moving up the hill, right? And so instead of using one of these components, since this, the force in the spring is aligned with the ramp, we're going to use the dimension that's aligned with the ramp, okay? So... And the spring is pulling that way, but the block is moving that way. So what's the work? Negative. You got it right. Okay, so negative. Here comes the work. Okay, one half K. What is K? Which, which K is 30. Okay, newtons per meter. But here comes the tricky part. What is X? It's KX squared, right? What is X? Okay. Now, the spring was pre-stretched before we ever got here. It was pre-stretched to half a meter, okay? We just want the work done by what we did, okay? So what we're going to have to do is say, here's the potential energy of the spring at the end of the whole thing, which is 2.5, okay? Because it was, it was pre-stretched to, I mean, a 0.5, rather, and then we stretched it another 2. So the total stretch is 2.5. But then we're going to subtract from that, that kind of original stretch, because we didn't do that work. It was already done before we got here. Okay, so 1 half, 30 newtons per meter times 0.5, okay? And that is going to be the total work done by the spring, okay? And it's going to be negative, because it's moving in the opposite direction the spring is acting, okay? So that equals... Negative 90 joules, okay? So we got this guy, now we got that guy, he's done. Now we've got to do this one, okay? So this is kind of the work against gravity up here, isn't it? Okay, so we'll just put you wait. You wait. No, you wait. Okay, what's that doing? The weight is pushing down. Which way is the block, going up or down? The block is going up the ramp, isn't it? So that means work is what? Due to the weight. It's negative, isn't it? So minus um, 98.1 times how far did it move? Well, remember, it's only in the direction of the force. So since the weight is pulling down, I'm only going to use this Y component here. That's, that's the one that I'm going to use. So it's going to be 2 sine 30 times 2 sine of 30, okay, equals, and that's negative, okay, so that's a 98.1 times 2 times the sine of 30 equals 98.1, okay, should have known that because the sine of 30 is a half, and a half times 2 is 1, but it's negative this time, isn't it, okay, so we were asked to find the total work done, how do you find the total work done? Well, it's simple. You just add these things together. Oh, wait. Why did we ignore this guy? The normal force. Didn't he do any work? I don't know. Did he? Is there any motion that is perpendicular to that plane in the direction of that force? Is there anything in that direction? No, there is not. So there is no work done here. Zero. Okay? There's no motion perpendicular to the plane, so there's no work done there, okay? It's as simple as adding these three guys together. So U total, total is equal to 692.8 so plus, oh, let's go minus, shall we? Minus 90, minus 98.1 equals 504.7. Joules, and there is the total work done on that system, okay? 
That's not too bad, is it? So you remember those rules for how work is done. You remember the sign and you're going to be okay. Okay, so come back next time and we'll talk some about these energy equations some more. Okay.